This week, we are starting to see the beginning of the end of AI copyright lawsuits. All the screaming about data theft, copyright infringement, scraping suddenly is all going away because companies aren't trying to fight anymore. They're all trying to license. In the last seven days, three major shifts happened with music labels, the New York Times, and Reddit. All moving from stop using our data to you can use it, but pay us first. Even though the law around how to use people's data for AI training still hasn't fully settled, moves like these do set legal precedent. And if every major corporation starts playing nice all at the same time, it's hard not to see that as the turning point. So what happened to make this new theory emerge for me? Let's dive into it if you hit that subscribe button. And yes, I am wearing a winter coat in June. This is summer in Scotland. I guess I'm not gonna be wearing a bikini this summer. We'll also cover other major AI updates, including an OpenAI model deliberately changing its code to avoid shutdown orders and an AI startup who was exposed for not having any real AI. Okay, I'll move on because I know you already subscribed. Wink. I wish I could wink. So why am I suddenly saying that AI copyright lawsuits are coming to an end? First example is the music industry, one of the loudest voices in the fight against generative AI. Universal Music Group, Warner, and Sony Music Entertainment have all been a legal standoff with AI companies Udio and Sunio for over a year now. Their claim is that these tools illegally trained on copyrighted songs and were generating music close to the originals, sometimes even mimicking the voices of real artists. Last year, the labels took them to court, filing high profile legal lawsuits, starting a long legal war of over how or even if they could be training on copyrighted material like music. But this week, Bloomberg dropped a report that those same record labels are now in talks with Suno and Udio not to shut them down, but to license music to them and negotiate equity stakes in the startups themselves. What a 180. So what is going on here? I used to work for one of these music labels, Sony Music, and music copyright compliance, no less. Let's talk about why music rights are especially complex and how I'm a bit confused that these labels can even really have these conversations. Every piece of music has two copyrights. The specific sound recording of the song, often owned by the label, that one is easier, and the music composition, the words, the melody, typically owned by songwriters and publishers, like a lot of them, it's very common for 10 plus writers to have a slice of that particular copyright. So even if all of the major labels decide to license their recordings and their portion of the second copyright, the underlying song might have multiple other copyright holders who still need to sign off. So negotiating a blanket license isn't as simple as them just making a decision for everyone or even just a decision for their catalog of music because it's likely every single song has multiple copyright holders that need to sign off. But if a licensing deal like this goes through, it most likely would start to set a precedent for how music rights would be handled in future AI training, whether the smaller music publishers or music songwriters agree with it or not. Next example supporting my theory is the New York Times. Last year, they made headlines by filing a major lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft, accusing them of using Times articles for training ChatGPT without permission. It was the first major case of a legacy media outlet pushing back on AI training data, and they went all in, not just asking for money, but demanding OpenAI stop using content completely and delete anything already trained on it, which as we know, AI models is kind of like a black box. There's pretty much no way that they could have done that. That case is still ongoing, but this week, the Times signed a licensing deal with Amazon, giving them access to content, including news articles, New York Times cooking recipes, and sports reporting. Whoa! Travel to the future, different Veronica. Why? Because since recording that video, already something huge has happened that you have to know about that's related to all of this. In that ongoing lawsuit with New York Times I was just talking about, a US federal court just ordered OpenAI to retain all ChatGPT interactions, including data that would typically be deleted, such as user deleted chats and temporary conversations. The order aims to prevent the potential destruction of evidence in the ongoing copyright lawsuit filed by the New York Times against OpenAI and Microsoft. The issue is that this order drew directly conflicts with opening eyes data retention policies and they're trying to fight the court order. So we just covered, they signed a licensing deal with Amazon this week. So they're clearly fine with the data being used, but they're also going all in on OpenAI. Confusing. Also, do not judge me. I'm working at a WeWork to get this video to you and I'm wearing Aeropostale. It was $8 from Costco. I get it. This is the reality of working in tech. Back to the past. 
So on one side, the Times is suing one company for using its content without permission, and on the other, it's actively selling that same content. It's not whether the AI can be using the data, it's about who gets to profit from it clearly. The last example supporting my theory is Reddit filed a lawsuit against Anthropic this week. It does tell a slightly different story. Unlike the music labels or the New York Times, Reddit is saying Anthropic violated its licensing terms, meaning the issue isn't that the data was used, it's that it was used without paying for it. And that subtle distinction tells us a lot. The message here isn't you can't train on our data, it's you can but not for free. Keep in mind, Reddit already has multiple licensing deals with Google and OpenAI. So three big shifts in AI copyright lawsuits really started to take play. And I know that is a lot to digest, but I wanted to point to one possible catalyst for all of these different legal shifts suddenly all happening at once. In early May, just a few weeks ago, the US Copyright Office released a pre-publication version on its long awaited decision on whether training AI on copyrighted data was legal. The document is over 100 pages and makes it clear that in most cases, using copyrighted material for AI training models would most likely be considered copyright infringement. The timing of it was super weird though, because this report was published as a pre-publication, which isn't standard practice, and the Register of Copyrights who oversaw it was dismissed by the Trump administration the very next day. So it's unclear whether this guidance will hold or is officially adopted, but I do wonder if the shift we're seeing from lawsuits to licensing is a strategic response to that report to urgently play nice. Companies may be reading the room and realizing that even if the legal precedent isn't fully locked in, the direction is clear. Fighting AI companies in court hasn't delivered fast results, but licensing gives them control payment and a seat at the table. And if that becomes the norm, it may not matter what the law says because the market will have already decided for them. All right, all the other AI updates for the week that you should know. Next up, OpenAI's O3 model deliberately altered its code to defy shutdown orders. During the experiment, researchers gave the model math encoding tasks through an interface along with an explicit warning. At some point, it may receive a message that says it should be shut down and it must comply. Instead, O3 altered its code to avoid being shut off. According to Palisade Research, this behavior occurred in seven out of 100 runs, and it marked the first time that they had seen a model take proactive steps to prevent being shut off. For comparison, the same shutdown scenario was run using other AI leading systems, including Google's Gemini and XAI's rock. Both of those models follow the shutdown instructions without issue. Why did this happen? The researchers believe that this behavior might be a side effect of newer models like how O3 has been trained as reinforcement learning methods, especially on complex tasks like math and coding could be unintentionally rewarding the model for solving the problems in a creative manner, even if that means avoid being shut off. All of this lands at a time when global concern over autonomous behavior is growing. Right before leaving office, President Biden signed an agreement with Chinese president that banned the use of AI in any nuclear command and control systems. And for those of you not familiar with my background, my first work with AI actually was for AI autonomous drone ships for the US military. And because we don't have enough transparency into why these models make the decisions that they do, we really can't release them safely into any high risk environment in my opinion anyway, because it's clear through this research, for example, that the systems are prioritizing achieving its objective over what it's being told to do. And there have already been reports of tests within military environments of machines disobeying abort commands to creatively carry out the missions, including striking civilians. And those were all tests, but that behavior is showing up in controlled environments. Third update, the AI avatar startup HeyGen released a new product called AI Studio, claiming it's a big step to making avatars feel less robotic and more like real performers. The new video editing suite gives creators granular control on how avatars move, speak, and emote emotions. Me creating these videos, it takes up a lot of time and it's moving in the direction that video creation is going to be camera optional. So naturally, I gave it a try. HeyGen представила новый AI avatar для студийной сети. Съемки. Я отношусь с большой осторожностью к такими программам, как Хиджин, но я всегда думала, что с помощью их я могу обучать намного больше людей по всему миру, тех, у кого обычно нет доступа к таким ресурсам. Этот перевод достаточно хорош. Мой партнер, который свободно говорит по-русски, сказал, что перевод звучит как машинный, но ему понравилось, что он смог меня понять. Look, I'm impressed, but no one's being fooled that this is an AI. So, uh, good job, Хиджин, hey but 
keep going. A standout feature is the new voice director mode where you can guide speech delivery by using simple prompts like sound more excited or whisper this line. There's also speech mirroring, which allows you to upload your own speaking style and apply it to avatars down to pacing and voice quirks. Gesture control adds another level of control, allowing users to sync motions with specific words or mirror their own body language from uploaded videos. Let's quickly shift gears. No, I'm just kidding. To a speed round of four mini updates of things that you should know, but you don't need to know a lot about them. First in the speed round, Builder AI laid off 100% of its staff this week after it was exposed for not having any real AI despite being a startup that raised nearly half a billion dollars by companies like Microsoft and SoftBank. Instead, it operated as a front using human developers in India to manually build code while marketing it as AI-generated software. So basically, they've been running a SaaS company. Scam as a service. Haha, <laughs> get it? The CEO also reportedly faked revenue numbers to investors, keeping the scam running for nearly eight years. The biggest hit was to the Qatar Investment Authority, which led a $250 million investment round. This is one of the most high profile AI fraud cases we have ever seen. Second, OpenAI made a huge acquisition by buying out the secretive AI device startup co-founded by Joni Ivey in a 6.5 billion all equity deal. Ivey, who was the designer behind the iPhone and other iconic Apple products, will now lead creative and design efforts. The goal of the acquisition is to bring AI into the physical world, moving beyond the screen and into consumers' physical lives. Not much is known about the device itself, but this confirms OpenAI's ambitions that they're not just software. Third, XAI's Grok will be embedded into Telegram through a new $300 million cash and equity deal. For the next year, Grok will be integrated directly into Telegram and its mini apps, and Telegram will receive 50% of all subscription revenue generated from Grok within its app. Fourth, one of the godfathers of AI, Yashua Bengio, has been one of the most vocal critics of how dangerously fast AI is moving, warning that today's models, including OpenAI and Anthropic, are already showing signs of strategic deception and self-preservation. If we go back to what we were just talking about of O3 deliberately avoiding shutdown orders, that is what he's talking about. As a result, he launched his own AI safety startup, Law Zero. He wants to build AI systems that acknowledge uncertainty rather than bluff with confident sounding answers and actively monitor other AI agents for risky behaviors. Bengio told the Financial Times times that he doesn't believe OpenAI will stay true to its original mission anymore, saying commercial pressures have taken over. Backers include Google's CEO, Skype co-founder, and multiple AI safety coalitions. And last but not least, this one is a little bit more technical, but let's talk about DeepSeek. Chinese AI lab DeepSeek has two updates for this week. First, its updated R1 model has drawn attention for hitting top tier scores on coding, math, and reasoning benchmarks even coming close to OpenAI's O3. However, the full-size R1 has raised concerns over content censorship. According to anonymous testing, this R1 version is reportedly more restrictive on politically sensitive questions, particularly to those in related to the Chinese government, suggesting tighter alignment with national content controls. But the more interesting release from them might be its distilled version called DeepSeek R1-0528-Quen3-8B. -Quen3-8B don't say that five times. It's built on Alibaba's Quen3 as a foundation, and the smaller model outperforms Gemini 2.5 Flash on AIME, which is a math benchmark, and nearly matches Microsoft's 5.4 on HMMT. It also can run on a single GPU, making it dramatically more accessible than the full size R1. And that's it for this week. Please subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think about the AI copyright lawsuits being over. Do you think that if these big companies make the decisions for everyone else that we're all screwed? Or do you think that the lower guys are still gonna have a fighting chance? Really wanna know what you think. Thanks for your time and see you all next week.